Now, one of the things where this can be useful to a person is in the concept of air quality. Here are some of the things that can happen in the air. We have nitrogen and oxygen. We know there's lots of both of those basically makes up the whole atmosphere of the planet, nitrogen and oxygen, and then everything else is considered to be a trace compound in the atmosphere, and it becomes nitrogen monoxide. Let's look at this for a moment and think about it. This delta H is a positive number. That means this has more energy than that did. That means it can only happen if energy has been put into it. Well, that's comforting because otherwise the whole darn atmosphere would be nitrogen monoxide instead of the nitrogen and oxygen that we're used to seeing in the atmosphere. So if we look at that first one, using what we know, we can see this would fit into the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S that we learned about in the last chapter. We can see that the delta S is not going to be very big because that's a gas and that's a gas. That's two gases. And this is two gases. These are combined with their own cells. This is different. So it turns out this has a little bit more entropy, but not a great deal more entropy. But I can say that delta S will be a positive number. So I'm looking at a situation where I have a delta H that is positive and a delta S that is positive. And I know that I need delta G to be negative if I want it to be spontaneous. And when would that happen? Well, that would happen if the temperature was high enough so that this negative would overpower this being positive. At high temperatures, this is going to occur and will create nitrogen monoxide. Okay, that explains why we don't find it generally in the atmosphere because the temperature is not high enough to make it happen normally. However, if you have a very hot engine, that hot engine would supply a surface on which this could occur. So for that first equation, we are ending up creating this nitrogen monoxide only in cases where there's a very hot temperature involved. These are what the atmosphere is normally made out of and we don't encounter a lot of this normally. But if we have a hot engine, we can create some of this. The second one, oh, it's starting with this. So if I have some of this, I'm still in the regular atmosphere. I can encounter some oxygen from the atmosphere and as a result, make nitrogen dioxide. This one is a negative for delta H, so it does naturally want to occur. This will gradually happen. It takes two of them, though, in order for this to happen. So that's kind of what is keeping this from happening at a very rapid rate, okay? So it will proceed to go to this for the second one. So it has to, two of those have to encounter the oxygen in the atmosphere in order to go to the nitrogen dioxide. But it is already got a, a negative sign here for delta H, which will make it easier for delta G to be a negative sign also. It tends to be spontaneous on its own. And then lastly, we're gonna take the nitrogen dioxide, and it turns out it's not terribly stable. Going from here to here, we can see that delta S will be positive. That would tend to make delta G negative. The delta H, though, is positive. So it's going to take another bit of high temperature to make this. There has to be some source of energy. It doesn't necessarily have to be temp just a high temperature. It could come from something else. That's, a, that's another thought going on there. This part says it won't be spontaneous, but the, the delta S part says that it will be. So again, you're going to have to have an energy source that will drive it up this hill. This is a sequence that we're going to have a picture about, and we'll explain that a little more as a result. What can happen though is this single oxygen is not happy alone. If it encounters some 
oxygen as we normally have it in the atmosphere, it can make ozone. And in point of fact, if it does encounter it, it will tend to do that because here's the delta H, that's downhill, you know? So it's like, oh, if it finds that O2, it'll make the ozone. Or another thing that can happen is this monatomic oxygen can encounter water. And if it does that, it'll make two of these OHs. This is not hydroxide. You'll notice this does not have a negative sign on it. Instead, what it is showing is that it has dot, like in the Lewis dot structures, to show that there is an unpaired electron. This is very reactive because it has that unpaired electron and it really wants to pair it up. So this is not necessarily going to happen very spontaneously because the delta H is fighting against that. But this is another possible thing that can happen to this monatomic oxygen once it's been created through these processes. Here's what the picture shows. If we look at this, here we have something that starts at 4 in the morning and runs until 4 in the afternoon. What and it's about air quality. They're trying to show you what happens as a result of rush hour traffic in the morning. And these are concentrations, but they don't have it labeled because they're probably all at different concentration values. They're just trying to show you the shapes of the curves. So the very first one is the creation of the nitrogen monoxide. That was our first equation where we were taking the nitrogen and the oxygen in the air and creating nitrogen monoxide. And this occurs because you have these hot car engines act as a surface that will transmit enough energy to the nitrogen and oxygen to make the nitrogen monoxide. Because remember, this one had a positive delta H, positive 180.6 kilojoules per mole. So in order for you to supply that energy, we can do that with a very hot engine. Once this has come into existence, then the nitrogen monoxide can encounter oxygen gas and create nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so that's this green one now. It can't do this until there's enough nitrogen monoxide to allow them to find each other and an oxygen molecule. So as the amount of NO goes up, that powers the ability of the NO2 to come into existence. And it continues to peak later than this one because, you know, how long will it take for these guys to find each other? It will have a lag, so it happens later in the morning than the peak for the nitrogen monoxide. So that was the second in the process. But it does, because of the delta H being a negative value, it has the ability to happen spontaneously. It's exothermic. It's going to find a temperature range where it will happen. Then lastly was the creation of the ozone. But as soon as we have the monotonic oxygen, it can find another O2 and create the ozone. But that happens later than both of these. This was the first process. This was the second process. And honestly, this was the fourth process, not the third. The third just created the monotonic oxygen. And this happens. Why? Okay. I said that if you had O2 and you had the monatomic oxygen, you would get the O3 if you had enough energy. Where does the energy come for this? It actually comes from the sunlight. Light from the sun, there's enough energy in particular wavelengths in order to make this happen because this was an uphill situation. So you needed sunlight in order to make this happen. That's where it's getting the energy. So ozone ends up peaking in the afternoon after the other processes have already gone through. And another thing that you can also see is these volatile organic compounds. You can see there's carbon in here. 
So these volatile organic compounds will come into existence during the morning and then trail off later in the afternoon. They actually tend to get broken down by the intense sunlight at noon.